Hello, good morning everyone. How are you today? I hope that all of you are doing well. This week, we would like to discuss a little bit about general linguistics. The topic is about phonetics and phonology. Okay, when we talked about phonetics and phonology, I'm sure that you are familiar with some terms related to consonants, vowels, pronunciations, what else, sound patterns, what is interesting, phonemes, and also probably suprasegmentals. This is the learning objective uh, of this session, and I hope that by the end, you will be able to classify consonants based on uh, the place of articulation and also manner of articulation. Besides that, also you are expected to uh, be able to classify vowels and also diphthongs. More related to phonology, you can also identify phonemes, allophones, and also types of phonological processes. Now, here are the uh, important keywords for this session. So, for example, like articulatory, acoustics, auditory phonetics, phonemes and allophones, minimal pairs, phonological processes, which consist of assimilation, dissimulation, deletion, insertion, and metathesis. And the last one is phonotactics. Okay, now let's have a look a little bit more on phonetics and phonology. So when we talked about phonetics, then we will be directed to the discussions about sounds, how the sounds is produced or used in human language. And once again, it focuses on the sounds of the language speakers produced in speech. While phonology, a little bit more than that. So it's about sound patterns in order to determine the ways in which speech sound, uh, especially speech sound form, become meaningful systems within the language. Okay, phonetic itself consists of articulatory phonetics, I mean that how we produce the sounds from our mouth, and then also acoustic phonetics, how the sounds are transferred from the speakers to the hearer as the sounds wave and uh, auditory phonetics, how someone or we hear pers uh, uh, or perceive the sounds. While the next one is actually about types or, or the co uh, categorizations of the sounds language. Yeah. As we learn, we know what's called by consonants and vowels. And consonant itself is divided into place of articulation and also manner of articulations, while vowels consist of cardinal vowels, English vowels, and diphthongs. Okay, so here is the picture, the illustrations of our, uh, what you call that, uh, where the sounds are being produced. So this is uh, what we call that the places of articulations later on, where the sounds started from between, uh, in front, yeah, in, in between lips or the tip and so on, and also in your oral, in our oral cavity. Yeah. So there's also parts of nasal cavity and pharynx here. So what sounds can we produce here? So here it is. Yeah, so for example, we can identify from bilabial. Yeah, so bi means two, right? So bilabial between two lips, bah and bah. But uh, also um, yeah, that's also the sounds that we can produce from bilabial. There's labiodental between lips and teeth, of and v, yeah. Interdental between teeth, th and th. Arveolar between uh, what you call it a little bit inside, like th. so tip of your tongue, and then on the arveolar ridge, yeah, we call that th. And, and also sh, uh, j, and also r, r, and all. What there's also what's so called by palatal, so palate, a little bit back on the alveolar, so that's what we call the sound sh and j, ch and j. I think you can feel that. 
also yuh sound. Uh, then, in terms of sounds produced by velar, k and g, so a little bit in the velum parts of your velum, k, g, ng, and w sound. Yeah, and the last one is the glottal. It's a little bit more to your glottal, your, your yeah. So that's inside. Yeah, so oh, sound. Can you feel that? Now, this is what so called by place of articulations, referring to the previous pictures. The next one is actually what so called by manner of articulation. So, how the sounds being produced. What is in general, and we can see then there's a stops and nasal sound. Stops, then there's a closure of the air, and then uh, there's a, what you call it considered into voice and voiceless. Voice, if there's a kind of friction with your vocal cord, but voiceless is no friction. Yeah, so if you if you differentiate that between b and b, then that's the difference. B, yeah, can you feel it? Mm? So that's a kind of friction in your vocal cords. Also, nasal sound, which is that influenced by uh, what I mean, it sounds produced through your uh, nose also. Fricatives, yeah, so consists of voice and voiceless too. Fricatives in this case is what uh, mostly related to uh, some parts of your what you call it uh, by what uh, fricates. Uh, there's a kind of like uh, friction if you know friction. Yeah, so uh, like can you see that one and off and there's a kind of friction actually from the sounds produced here. Also, entertain tough and the well, you can see that. Yeah, there's an affricate, yeah, uh, and also glide and liquid being mentioned. Okay, so details of the information available in your textbook, but um, again, <clears throat> we just need to identify uh, applied linguistic. We'll not specifically learn this one, but we're just gonna use this one actually in order to help. For example, in terms of teaching English, to make sure that we know how to pronounce certain words or certain sounds. Okay. Oh, this is the a little bit more details about place of articulations, as I said before, bilabial. Yeah, bringing lips together, labiodental, lower lips and teeth, interdental, yeah, tip of the tongue through the teeth, and then alveolar, yeah, tongue at or near the alveolar ridge. There's a palatal, yeah, further back on the mouth and hard palate, and velar. <coughs> Once again, that's a soft part of roof of mouth. Yeah, that's behind the palate or the velar. Yeah. So the sounds being produced. If you can feel that. Also, the uh, the last one is glottal produced in the larynx. Yeah, uh, with the word sound. Okay, that's place of articulations. We have also manner of articulation, as I said before. Yeah, stops, fricatives. Africate, liquids, nasal. Now, here is where vowels being produced. So sometimes then we can see that <clears throat> from high. So that's where the word I sounds. Yeah, I, I in this case is actually being produced. Also, uh, A yeah, in the middle and lower A. Uh, you can see A and A. Yeah, so, A, uh, A. Uh. In this case, that parts of the central and also uh, central mid and central low. Okay, it sounds diphthong I, yeah, so that's a central, and then uh, process, yeah, there's a process I, yeah, from central to front, and then ow, uh, central to back, for example, and then oi, oh, from back to front, so there's a kind of movement for that. Good. Now let's have looked on what's so called by phonology. Phonology, what is in, in, important is the phoneme. Yeah. So phoneme is the minimal unit of sounds that capable to distinguish words in different meanings. Yeah. So for example, it's speech sounds. For example, this is the phoneme f and v before. This one is considered an English phonemes because they contrast in terms of the word fine and wine. 
So that's related to some essential property from the sounds itself. Then hymen also pro, uh, presents there are three views in terms of phoneme. What are they? Phoneme as the phonetic reality, phonemes of a phonological reality, and phonemes of a, uh, as a psychological reality. Okay, next about minimal pairs. By producing that sounds and examining some uh, minimal pairs or minimal series in a language, then we can identify what's called by phonetic inventory of the language. So uh, it is the speech sounds that make up the systems of the language. So this is the examples of minimal pair, the word pin with plosive and spin without plosive. Yeah. So there's an air coming out from uh, after you say pin, pin, spin. Can you see the difference, right? And also leap and slip, leap and slip. Now let's move to phonological processes. As I told you, there are at least uh, five uh, types of phonological processes. Assimilation, dissimulation, deletion, insertion, and metathesis. What are they? Okay, first assimilation. So assimilate. So that's a kind of modification of sound in order to make it more similar to the sounds of the sounds in the neighborhood. And it occurs through an anticipation. Yeah, so it can be, de uh, people can identify, detectable in this case, of the following sounds by uh, maintaining some features into the next sounds. There are three types of them, anticipatory assimilation, regression assimilation, and progressive assimilation. For example, this one. Uh, nasalization, yeah, in English word pin, there's a sound pin in this case. The vowel I become nasalized because ended with an sound, right? There's also regular ending in English, what's it called, what's so called by voice assimilation, for example, like pets. Sometimes it's not only pets to be sound, pets. Sound yeah, a little bit on that. Roses, can you feel that? Yeah, so that's the ending. Now, once again, it is not uh, arbitrary, but again, this is phonological condition. So, yeah, so arbitrary is actually it's kind of representing. No, it's not a representing. When we say rose, is rose, but with ended with s, make it plural, then there's a kind of assimilation adjustment in this case. Okay, now what about dissimulation? Dissimulation is the kinds of modification to of a sound in order to make difference. Yeah, before we make it similar, now difference more enhanced or more auditory, auditorily distinct. And the effect of this dissimulation is actually to make sounds more distinct, different from other sounds and environment. For example, in in some words like this, then yeah, fifth, fifth. Yeah, there's a kind of sound, small sound, yeah. Fifth, we, you, you do not just say fifth, fifth, yeah, instead of fifth, yeah, so that's of that. Deletion, deletions is another one. Deletion is a complete removal, so take out, actually, of a sound, but it is rare to happen in the beginning of the word, yeah, unless, for example, in the schwa, for example, in the word, away, yeah, which become very way cool, yeah, way, yes, from away, <clears throat> way over the mountain, the word upon, upon my word, yeah, so kinds of that, and yeah, they delayed that to reach uh, what, uh, fluency in this case. Now, a very common deletion happens with the vowels in the middle, yeah, for example, family becomes family, Every becomes every, deficit becomes deficit. Okay, and another deletion at the end of the sound is known, what's so called by apocope, yeah, which lead to the well, I mean, written silent and also done. For example, when you say left behind, there's no sound 
okay and race gain race gain okay now insertion when we talked about insertion uh, it's related to prevent clusters of consonants yeah so that violate syllable in the structure and this will ease the transition and also ease the transit uh, bit uh, what or to ease transitions between segments insertion so insertion is actually uh, additional sound yeah, in order to prevent clusters of consonants that violate syllable structure constraint. And this will ease transitions between segments that have multiple incapabilities. For example, in English, stopped plus nasal sounds, yeah, and these sounds are prohibited. And uh, insertion, a word is called ephantasis. This is an example, for example, F and R sound, yeah. For example, in the 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 sounds athlete, yeah. Can you see the athlete, athlete, athlete? The word film. That's not film, film, right? So that's kinds of additional sounds over there. Next is metathesis. Metathesis is about phonological rule that moves phoneme from one place in uh, the string to another. And in some dialect of English, for example, the word asks, yeah, it's pronounced as ask, but in the word asking, you can say asking. Yeah. So metathesis actually switch S and K. Asking, ask, 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 asking. Okay, last but not least, this is the issue about phonotactics. Uh, phonotactics is a combining sounds into syllable, and this is this happened in the situations where a language has different phonemic uh, inventories. Yeah, for example, like uh, syllables that are phonological units that consist of one or more sounds and made up nucleus. Yeah, so nucleus is once again that's about the core or the syllables that make up high sonorous segment okay this is probably we need to identify later on what's so called by closed syllable and also open syllable okay now this is the reflective questions that you may think after the session what is the difference between phonetics and phonology why do we need to know the place of articulation and manner of articulation and why should we identify five phonological processes or can you identify five phonological processes in your own words and give some examples of course okay I think uh, that's all for our material video this time I hope that you get some illustrations about our session this week thank you I'll see you again next week bye bye